Good morning and welcome to Cornwall's Cathedral, to Truro Cathedral. I am the Dean of the Cathedral, Father Simon Robinson, and it's a great joy on behalf of the governing body of the Cathedral and the acting diocesan Bishop of Truro to welcome you here to your Cathedral on this great day of celebration, celebration of hard work and achievement. Congratulations to you all. A couple of very practical um, uh, notices. Would you kindly ensure that your mobile phones are on silent? There's nothing more important happening in the world today than the, the, these celebrations. So please do uh, put your phones on silent. In the highly unlikely event we have to evacuate the cathedral, please make your way back through the entrance doors or the accessible entrance or the doors here which lead to the chapter house steps and gather in High Cross um, at the front of the cathedral. Please do do that if we need to in an orderly fashion. Having been a teacher and a head teacher for many years of my life, I know what a wonderful moment it is to celebrate the achievements of our children and our young people. So I hope that there are very many proud families in the cathedral today. Have a really wonderful celebration of your achievements today. And thank you for being here. Distinguished guests, academic lecturers and staff, family, friends and graduates. As Vice Chair of the Board of Governors, it's my honour to welcome you to the Cornwall College Group Graduation Ceremony for 2023. Today, we celebrate the academic and personal accomplishments of students from 10 of our campuses in Sussex, Devon and throughout Cornwall. Students who with focus and resilience have completed a learning journey that has led to this remarkable setting. On behalf of the Cornwall College Group, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone from Truro Cathedral for such a warm welcome. We're grateful to have the opportunity to host our graduation against such a beautiful and historic backdrop. It's clear to see from all the parents, partners, family and friends present that it's a proud day for everyone. Feel free to express that pride during the conferment of awards a bit later and know that loud clapping and yelling is strongly encouraged. We extend our thanks to those acting as confers during the presentation of awards today. We're delighted to be joined by Professor Archie Clements, Deputy Vice-Chancellor at the University of Plymouth. Dr. Douglas Brown, Dean of Screen, Technology and Performance at Falmouth University and Belinda Andrews-Jones, RVN, member of the RCVS Veterinary Nurses Council. I'd also like to welcome Debbie Richards, Chief Executive for Cornwall Partnerships NHS Foundation Trust. Debbie is a distinguished figure and an influential leader in the healthcare sector and will be delivering our keynote speech. We're also delighted to be joined by Kim Conchie, the Deputy Lieutenant of Cornwall. Kim is also Chief Executive Officer for Cornwall Chamber of Commerce and will present this year's Student of the Year Award. We're honoured again to be joined by Peter Gregg, Director of Piper's Farm, who is with us today representing the Worshipful Company of Farmers. Before I finish, I'd like to offer my warmest congratulations to all graduates. Today is the culmination of your academic success and your many years of resilience, dedication and hard work. As you set off into the outside world as graduates, you should be proud of what you have achieved, just as everyone at the Cornwall College Group is enormously proud of you. Enjoy your day. I'd now like to invite John Evans, Principal and Chief Executive Officer of the Cornwall College Group, to say a few words.
Good morning. Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, family and friends, and of course, graduates. Welcome to the 2023 graduation ceremony of the Cornwall College Group. We are th thrilled that you can join us in this impressive setting for a passionate celebration of success. To all you graduates graduating today, congratulations. You'll hear that a lot today. You have navigated through challenges, learned from your mistakes, and have triumphed over adversity. You have not just gained new knowledge, you have developed friendships, discovered new passions, and grown as individuals. As you move forward, always remember the lessons you have learned, not just from the textbooks and journals, but from your experiences and interactions with one another. I have great pride in standing here today, overseeing you graduating in such a diverse number of subjects, such as horticulture and landscape design, ecological restoration, environmental farming, golf and business degrees, wildlife education, counselling, to name just a few, and I could keep going. I am sure there was a time in the last year where you thought this day wouldn't come. Well, it has, and it is your day. Therefore, please ensure that you feel free to cheer, and I echo Pat's message, to clap or even scream and whoop if you see fit. As we gather here to mark the end of one chapter and the beginning of another, it is only fitting that we take a moment to acknowledge the incredible support that has brought you all to this point today. I can remember working towards my degree and on reflection have realized that I could not have achieved it without the support, patience and love of my family and friends. I am sure that all of you graduates sat here today will be able to recall a time when you were just a little bit moody and not the most reasonable person to have around as deadlines started to loom. I can see a few of you nodding. Despite this, your family and friends have still turned up to celebrate with you today. To the parents and guardians and family members and friends who have stood by your side through the late night study sessions, the countless exams and assessments, and the occasional moment of doubt, their sacrifices and unwavering belief in you haven't gone unnoticed. Your graduation today is as much a testament to their love and support as it is to your hard work and dedication. So let's take a moment for today's graduates to show their appreciation for their support, love and tolerance throughout the last few years by applauding them. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our amazing higher education teams. As you have experienced, they are a fantastic teachers, passionate support staff, dedicated experts who achieve and inspire year in and year out, supported by some excellent businesses and industry partners who provide real world experience. Please can we acknowledge the, party, the, the part they have played in, this, in your success by applauding them. You'll get used to clapping today. I am very proud to be the principal of the Cornwall College Group. You've heard 10 campuses across Devon and Cornwall, 1,000 apprentices, 2,800 16 to 18 year olds, 1,500 staff, and approximately 1,000 students studying undergraduate and postgraduate degree programs, with 250 graduating just today. This year, we were awarded silver in the Teaching Excellence Framework the Ofsted of higher education, 
which positions us as one of the top higher education providers in the South West. So well done to everybody involved. The Cornwall College Group has success, been successfully delivering higher education programmes for many years in conjunction with its university partners. Last year, with the support of our, pay, our higher education partners, the Cornwall College Group was awarded university status. Therefore, we have been dilig dil diligently developing the university centre's brand, including the creation of a logo, graduation gowns and marketing materials. Today we are proudly launching and wearing the Cornwall College University Centre logo, specifically designed for our graduates and their award certificates. We have called it the Tree of Knowledge, which encompasses our University Centre's ethos and vision, and we are very proud of it. At its core, the design is a magnificent representation of a tree, signifying growth, grounding, eco-consciousness and sustainability. Its roots gracefully incorporate marine life and coastal elements, highlighting our deep connection to the environment. The fish swimming into the design at the bottom and the bird soaring out of the canopy vividly illustrate a transformative journey. The bird's flight symbolising our role in empowering learners, providing them with the wings to soar. It includes acknowledgments to the Cornwall's coat of arms and the Duchy of Cornwall with 15 bezant coins in the tree's canopy. We feel that this modern and unique design sets us apart as a university centre that only embraces innovation but also offers something distinct and extraordinary in its educational offerings. In the roots of this tree, you'll find a Celtic heart, a nod to the rich Celtic roots of both Cornwall and Devon. It beautifully represents how education lies at the heart of our university centre's tree of knowledge. Graduands, please do not treat this as the end of your journey, and you will hear that a lot today. Today, my message is clear. This graduation ceremony is the beginning of your next journey, your next chapter, and the beginning of that new chapter that could lead you to all sorts of exciting experiences. You have now gained a key to many doors. Behind each door will be numerous opportunities. The doors or doors that you open are down to you. It is now your choice, a really exciting time. I learned this because many years ago I started as an apprentice motor mechanic and then went on to eventually become a motor vehicle lecturer. I really thought I had made it. I was fortunate enough to have had a head of department that advised, supported and even forced me to understand that if I really wanted to progress then I needed to gain a degree, my key, and how right he was. I certainly had no idea at that time that one day I would be stood here as the proud principal of the Cornwall College Group. So this really is the beginning of the journey for you to make an impact in the world. In closing, I want to leave you with a quote which I found from Barack Obama. He said, all those adults that you used to think were in charge and knew what they were doing, it turns out they don't have all the answers. A lot of them aren't even asking the right questions. So if the world's going to get better, it's going to be up to you. So go and change the world. Congratulations to class of 2023. The world awaits you, your unique contributions, and I have no doubt that you will rise to the occasion. Thank you for listening. Now I would very much like to welcome our guest speaker, Debbie Richards. Debbie began her career as a probation service officer and has since gained many years of senior level experience in clinical service delivery. Debbie's NHS career spans mental health, community services and acute trusts. As Chief Exec at Cornwall Partnership NHS Foundation Trust, 
Debbie is passionate about transforming community services with the voluntary, community and social enterprise sectors. It is a huge honour to have, have her here with us, so please give a warm welcome to Debbie Richards. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to speak here today. It's an absolute honour to be asked to share a little of my journey with you. The last time I spoke in this cathedral, I was a pupil at Goonhaven Primary School, and I was asked to read the lesson. It was a long time ago, so much so I can't remember what I read. However, I do remember certain things. I remember how proud my parents were, and actually how many people they told, that was a bit embarrassing. Pride is not something we talk that much about, is it? But pride and feeling proud is something I'd like to talk a little bit about today. I remember how nervous I was. I worried about whether I was the right person to read that lesson. I worried if I could read it well enough. Would I let my parents down? And then the self-doubt started to creep in. So I could have read it a bit better, but I did it. I was so pleased I did it, and looking back, despite all that anxiety and self-doubt, I made my parents, my classmates, and my school proud. But the thing I hadn't recognized at the time, and the thing that it has taken me many years to recognize, was that I had also done myself proud. And I had nearly let my self-doubt and anxiety deny me and my family that moment of pride. I have since learned that I'm not alone, and most of us have self-doubt and anxieties, but being proud of oneself, patting oneself on the back, and saying, well done me, is not something that comes easily to most of us. And when others say, well done, we tend to shrug it off. Why do we do that? Recognition and validation are so important. So please let me start by adding my well dones and congratulations to every single one of you here today. Please be proud as individuals with your unique skills, interests and achievements. And please remember that only you really know what it has taken for you to be here today. Now I am sure that along this journey you have been touched by the kindness of others you will have been supported and encouraged by your lecturers, placement supervisors, families and friends. But this achievement is still yours. So find a way, your way, to be proud of you. The person you have become and how your achievements bring us together today in this magnificent place. Now I was asked to come and say more than well done. And then I thought, why was I asked? It's a long time since I spoke in this cathedral. Why did they ask me? And yet again, that self-doubt started to creep in. I dismissed many easy narratives, such as Billie Eilish was already booked, or they were desperate, or I was the only one available. And I concluded that I was asked as I actually do have a story to tell. A story that started in Cornwall, and a story that in part started in this very cathedral. I was asked because the nine-year-old me who read that lesson so many years ago stands here today as a chief executive of one of the two major NHS providers in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, delivering community services and mental health services. My trust employs over 5,000 people. Actually, some of you may be here today as colleagues, so I'd better stay real. And we're still looking for more staff. And we may have a job for you as graduates of Cornwall College, and I certainly know that we work together on opportunities for placements and joint learning. I'm so proud that our NHS organisation works really closely with local schools, colleges and universities to support and develop local people into employment. This collaboration is really important to me personally. Why? Well, that promising child who read the lesson in this cathedral all those years ago moved from primary school to Truro Girls Grammar, but two years into my A-levels, I left school. My parents were horrified. I was leaving school at 16 as I was bored. 
I couldn't see the point in any more education. A uni university education was not meant for a person like me. No one in my family had been to university, so why was I going to be any different? And although my teachers had been encouraging me as university material, it was also noted that I worked hard but only did well in subjects that interested me and that I had a tendency to become bored very easily. So I got a job in a bank. Well, I realised that working in a bank, and big apologies here to anyone who I might offend, that was boring too. So now what? Imagine my poor parents. And that's my third theme. How do I overcome my need to remain interested? Essentially, not to get bored. An opportunity to travel presented itself, and I went a very long way away from Cornwall to the Republic of Vanuatu in the southwest Pacific. Now, that experience was not boring. It was beautiful, it was warm, and full of such lovely people, and I learned so much about life and myself. I even realized how important and how valued the things that had bored me were. There was no television, no public libraries, or a good choice of food in the supermarket, and yet these were some of the happiest, and at that time, healthiest people in the world. I couldn't stay away forever, and I returned to Cornwall, and in my early 20s, like most people, I settled down. I had a young family, and then I thought, what do I do now? I'm back in Cornwall with uh, three children, few qualifications, and as much as I love my home and my family, I need more. So I remembered those lessons from Vanuatu, how much I enjoyed learning about a new culture and approach to life, and I started an open university degree in social sciences. Some of my lectures were actually held in Camborne. I still remember the lecturer's encouragement, the way they made me feel, the thirst they gave me to continue to be curious. I loved that degree. I then secured a job with Cornwall Probation Service as a probation service officer, and that job was a fixed-term contract. And if I wanted to continue the work that I loved, I needed to be qualified. But at that point, that was not possible in Cornwall. So I chose a degree where I could combine my studies for a diploma in social work with a master's degree. And I chose a university where I could be accommodated uh, with my family close to schools and to the university. And that university that offered that was Oxford University. Would they think I was good enough for them? More self-doubt started to creep in but it was worth a try. So as a young mum with no A-levels, an open university degree, but no real other achievements than three children, I went to Oxford University, and I proudly graduated with my master's degree. I then started my career as a social worker at Broadmoor Hospital, and that was another massive learning experience. And I then progressed, joining the hospital management team, and I have since had a fantastic and very rewarding NHS career in management before returning to Cornwall two years ago to work and live. I frequently tell my colleagues I have the best job in the world. I have the best job in Cornwall. I'm proud to be the CEO of my organisation. I'm only one of two social workers to be chief executive in the, in the, in the NHS. So here I am, back in Cornwall. And do you know that I can in all confidence say to you today, you too can have one of the best jobs in the future. The best job is not about status or about how much money you earn. The best job in life is one where you are happy, where you are interested and you feel you can make a difference. So looking to the future, I have three tips. One, seize opportunities when they present themselves. Two, always be kind to yourself and others. Learn to manage self-doubt. Learn to manage your anxieties, get to know yourself, and embrace your own traits. And finally, be rightly proud of yourself. When things get tough, remind yourself of those achievements and how they made you and others around you feel. Those feelings are a gift that only you can give yourself. Thank you.
Thank you, Debbie. So, now is the moment that you have all been waiting for. Please join me, Kate Wills, Deputy Principal at the Cornwall College Group, in applauding all of our graduates as they each take their moment to shine after years of hard work. So, if Dr. Douglas Brown, Dean of Screen, Technology and Performance at Falmouth University, and John Evans, Principal of the Cornwall College Group, would please take their places, we will begin the conferment of awards with Falmouth University. The BA Honours Games Design for Industry, Samuel Cotton. David Jones. <laughs> Alex Kendall. James Quayley. Ty Radcliffe. Thank you, Douglas. You may take your seat. Can I now invite Professor Archie Clements, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Plymouth, to step forward and confer our awards with the University of Plymouth. The BA Honours Art and Design Practice, Charlie Adamson Hammond. Kay Connick. <laughs> Michelle Redmore. BA Honours Counselling Studies, Andrew Clark. <laughs> the BSc Honours Agriculture, Laura Butt. Alexandra Kirkwood. Andrew Seaman. Poppy Slowly. Jessica Wakefield. The BSc Honours Applied Animal Health, 
Jacob Barber. Elliot Bayliss. Darcy Bowser. Jenna Marriott. Werner Schmidtke. <laughs> Jody Smith. <laughs> Taya Wills. The BSc Honours Applied Equitation Science, Juliet Snellgrove. <laughs> the BSc Honours Computing Technologies, Ollie Enright. Lewis James. The BSc Honours, Health, Welfare and Social Sciences, Francis Pucky. The BSc Honours, Sport, Health and Exercise Science, Connor Drew. <laughs> Josh Hocking. Ross Payne. <laughs> Amelia Ryan. Lewis Wilding. We now warmly welcome Nathan Brown's son Archie to this ceremony to celebrate his father's achievement and collect a posthumous award on his behalf. Nathan sadly passed away in the summer. This award represents Nathan's ambition to fulfil this academic qualification and how he will be missed by us all.
The Certificate in Advanced Counselling Studies, Karen Armitage. Tara Bell. Karen Bullock. Kimberly Champion. Heidi Gray. Deborah Harvey. Deborah Jenkin. Kira Johns. Charlotte Johnson. Samantha Kemp. Paul Philp. Greta Ryan Pasadi. <laughs> Beth Searle. Lisa Stockley. Andrew Wynn. The Diploma in Person-Centred Counselling and Therapy, Charlotte Abbott-Rowe. <laughs> Ruby Banks. Anne Davis. <laughs> Jeffrey Gay.
Lauren Golding. Maeve McNelly. <laughs> Natalie Nicklin. Jenna Nix. <laughs> Ellie Peters. Rhiannon Steele. <laughs> Jessica Thomas. Laura Turner. Imogen Wade. Sarah Walsh. <laughs> Imi Warren. Samantha Williams. <laughs> Isella Wood. The staff and students at the Cornwall Counselling Institute would like to honour a student that cannot be with us today. Her name is Debbie Taylor. She has been on a long and challenging journey with her health and we would like to send her our love and support. Foundation degree, art and design practice, Sarah Goodall. <clears throat> Foundation degree, agriculture, Nathan Delbridge. Erin Lockett. <laughs> Isabella Rhodes. <laughs> Claire.
Clara Woodhead. Foundation Degree, Equitation, Training and Behaviour, Sophie Anger. <clears throat> Maria Carlton. Catherine Hill. <laughs> Evie Mabel Ross. Lily Thomas. <laughs> Jasmine Urell. HNC Construction and the Built Environment, Jimmy Corrin. <laughs> Anthony Morvan. Foundation degree in veterinary nursing, Emily Anderson. <clears throat> Katie Bradshaw. Courtney Brixton. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Courtney Brixton. <laughs> Holly Elan. Lauren Bowman. <clears throat> Kiran Foster. Hannah Galvin. <laughs> Tina Hutton Fellows. Megan Terrell. <clears throat> Rebecca Terry. <clears throat> Lauren Walter.
Thank you, John and Archie, for the conferment of our awards. You may now take your seats. Can I now welcome Belinda Andrews Jones, RVN, member of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, Veterinary Nurses Council, who will lead the declaration. It is a great honour and pleasure to be here with you today, celebrating your graduation and leading you through your declaration to join the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, Register of Veterinary Nursing, and admit you as an associate of the member college. The title veterinary nurse is one to be proud of. Although veterinary nursing is a relatively young profession, it has come a long way since the scheme started of the Registered Animal Nursing Auxiliary back in 1961. You were joining our profession during an unprecedented period of positive change and growth. Please be proactive and engage in our profession. Be the catalyst of change you want and instrumental in the shape of the future. Anything is possible. The work you have undertaken to be here with you today should not be underestimated. Along the way, you have passed numerous examinations Assignments OSCEs completed the RCVS Day 1 skills for veterinary nursing. This is truly outstanding and you should be extremely proud. Now it is time to re reap the reward and savour the results of all of your hard work. Today is a monumentous day with your admission to the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons Registry of Veterinary Nursing, allowing you to legally practice as a veterinary nurse, abiding by the VN Code of Professional Conduct by an accountable professional person. As veterinary nurses, you are an essential part of the veterinary team, working alongside your colleagues to ensure the health and welfare of your patients. You make a positive difference in every shift you work. Do not ever forget that. Now will I ask you to make the declaration. Please re repeat as a group each line after me. I promise and solemnly declare that I will pursue the work of my profession with integrity. And accept my responsibilities To the public, my clients, the profession. And the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. And above all, my constant endeavour will be to ensure the health and welfare of animals committed to my care. In the name of the College of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons and by the virtue of the powers confirmed upon them by the Royal Charter and the Act of Parliament, I do hereby admit you as associates of the said Royal College and by the powers confirmed upon you will be the right to be styled registered veterinary nurse and to be known and deemed recognised henceforth as a duly qualified member of the veterinary nursing profession. I congratulate you on becoming a qualified registered veterinary nurse and I wish you a satisfying and challenging career. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. Can I now invite Pat Wilde, 
Vice Chair of the Cornwall College Group Board of Governors, and John Evans, Principal of the Cornwall College Group, to step forwards and confer our final set of awards for the Cornwall College Group. Postgraduate Certificate in Education, Kathy Archer. <laughs> Elizabeth Crossley. Samantha De Matos. Nicola Ibbotson. Alex Jackson. Sophie Trestrail. <laughs> For the Certificate in Education, Amanda Laffin. Carmen Morecambe. <laughs> Diploma in Education and Training, Elizabeth Bates. Joanne Harrison. <laughs> Danielle Highbell. <laughs> Matthew Orwin. Chris Yaskin. <laughs> Foundation Degree Child and Family Studies, Lindsay Applegarth. Anne Cook. <laughs> Bethany Foster. Charlotte Halls. <laughs> Megan Hicks. <laughs> Anita Julian. Tracy Lewan.
Catherine Smith. Katie-Anne Wetherill. <laughs> Foundation degree in photography, Georgia Knowles. The CMI Operational Department Manager, Higher, Ed Higher Apprenticeship Level 5, Ian Dawes. <laughs> Amy Lucas. Lee Quinney. <laughs> Amy Wall. The Healthcare Assistant Practitioner Level 5 Apprenticeship, Georgina Billsby. <laughs> Coral Cheney. Amy Foden. <laughs> Lara Hicks. Kirkpatrick. Sharon Pond. Donna Stoner. <laughs> Victoria Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our conferments. John and Pat, thank you, and please take your seats. Now we come to the presentation of our Student of the Year Awards. These awards have been nominated by our teaching staff and chosen by a panel of higher education staff at the Cornwall College Group. I'd like to invite Kim Conchi, CEO of the Cornwall Chamber of Commerce, to step forward to present the award with John Evans, Principal of the College, Cornwall College Group. Student of the Year Award 2023. This award recognises an individual for their outstanding academic achievement and commitment to our student community. 
Today, we are thrilled to throw a spotlight on a student who has displayed unwavering dedication. They completed the foundation degree science in equitation training and behavior, and then continued their studies on the Bachelor of Science with honors in applied animal health at Dutchie College, Stoke Climsland. Their love for equine studies has shone throughout. Despite facing a debilitating illness during their degree studies, this student persevered. They embraced technology, attending classes virtually, um, and also making up for missed lessons. Their dedication and their academic excellence were ever present, even during countless hospital appointments. Happily, their health has improved, and they triumphantly returned to in-person classes, inspiring their peers and the curriculum staff alike. This student not only achieved academically, but also demonstrated remarkable resilience. Today, they graduate with first-class honours and a thesis that has been submitted for the prestigious British Society of Animal Science Thesis of the Year Award. Our Student of the Year Award goes to an individual who exemplifies dedication, perseverance and passion. I'm delighted to announce the winner of the Student of the Year Award 2023 is Darcy Bowser. We are very proud to celebrate a second award this morning from the Worshipful Company of Farmers. To present this award, on their behalf, I would like to invite Peter Gregg, Director of Piper's Farm, to join John in presenting the award. The Worshipful Company of Farmers Recognition of Achievement in Education Prizes are awarded annually to a student at each of the 13 leading agricultural colleges across the United Kingdom. This year, the Duchy College Prize celebrates the incredible journey of personal growth and academic development undertaken by one of our dedicated graduates. This year's recipient started the Bachelor of Science with Honours Agricultural Programme with a good practical background in farming, but was new to academic writing and research skills. However, their determination to earn an honours degree and enter the agricultural sector as a professional pushed push them to excel. Guided by tutors, by peers and support staff, this student devoted themselves to enhancing their research, writing and communication skills. They deepened their understanding of agriculture, focusing on livestock production. The highlight of their journey came during their oral presentation for their honours project. Delivered clearly and confidently, they impressed everybody, resulting in one of the highest marks. This student's inspiring transformation speaks volumes. I'm delighted to announce this year's winner is Jessica Wakefield.
Our final award this morning is the University of Plymouth Partnership Award. May I ask Professor Archie Clements, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, the University of Plymouth, to join John on the stage to present the award. Our Academic Partnership Award celebrates a graduate who embodies academic and personal dedication. From their very first moments on the Bachelor of Science with Honours Agriculture Programme at Dutchie College, this student has consistently excelled. They combined outstanding academic skills with a deep passion for agriculture, earning a remarkable first-class honours degree. Their dedication extended beyond the classroom. In their first year, they played a vital role in a successful marketing exercise with a local milk processor. And in their second year, they contributed to a tender exercise for the Duchy of Cornwall Farm, earning commendation from the land stewards. And furthermore, their teamwork ensured fellow students reached and exceeded their potential. In their final year, they won the prestigious Royal Association of British Dairy Farmers Annual Health Award, impressing the Chief Judge with their proactive approach to farm health management. It is this student's commitment, dedication and unwavering passion for agriculture that has earned them this award and with them soon joining the ranks of leading animal breeding company, Genus ABS, it's clear that they are destined to contribute significantly to the future of farming. I'm delighted to announce the winner of this year's Academic Partnership Award, Laura Butt. I would like to invite our graduate from the Diploma in Person-Centred Counselling and Therapy, Anne Davis, to say a few words. Carl Rogers, the father of person-centered therapy, famously said, a person is a fluid process, not a fixed entity, a flowing river of change, not a block of solid material, a continually changing constellation of potentialities, not a fixed quantity of traits. All of us here today are celebrating a milestone in our life journeys. I am so proud to be here with you and share in that joy. The Cornwall College Group, our inspirational lecturers and support staff have nurtured us throughout this process and our family and friends have been our support crew in terms of helping us reach our individual finishing lines. My husband is here today who loves bizarrely to run ultra marathons, so that particular metaphor is for him. I believe for many, and perhaps for all of us here, our time with Cornwall College has been life-changing. I chose the quote I began with because prior to the studying of counselling 
I had reached a point in my life where I felt fixed and static. It felt like there was a metaphorical dam blocking my own personal river of change and there was not a lot of flowing going on. My job involved working therapeutically with traumatized children and their parents, with the main focus being child protection. Too often, more than I like to admit, I was jumping from point to point in what is known as the Cartman Drama Triangle, going from rescuer to victim to persecutor. It was not healthy and it was not sustainable, which is why I applied for a place on the Level 5 Diploma in Person-Centered Counseling and Therapy. It was my way of busting my own personal dam and one of the most rewarding and important choices I have ever made. All of us, at some point, I would offer, spend time cycling around the drama triangle. But learning, and above all, learning about ourselves on courses such as the ones we have completed through the Cornwall College Group enable us to grow. I also know through my course that I will always be a bit of a rescuer. I even liked putting on this graduation gown today as it gave me a bit of a superhero vibe. And I'm not going to lie, it's going to be hard to return it. Wanting to help others, I believe, is a good thing particularly when I look at what is going on in the world today. And as much as I like the idea of them, we don't really need to wear superhero outfits. Helping others is something that our courses at Cornwall College have fostered and equipped us to do. We have been inspired by those who taught us and each other to be informed ethical, empathic, lifelong learners. It is vital that we continue to explore who we are and the choices that we make. We must practice self-care so that we are safe practitioners in whatever area we work in. Often, when we get too busy, Self-care goes by the wayside, and then our ability to care for ourselves and therefore care for others starts to wane. Show the compassion and kindness that you give to others to yourselves. This graduation marks both an ending and many new beginnings for all of us. For me, it has given me the opportunity to go back to something I love, which is teaching. And teaching on a new course, which I'm passionate about, but also to work therapeutically in a drug and alcohol rehab, with more knowledge and self-knowledge than I would have believed possible. Not only did my course give me knowledge, it helped me to find the courage to move forward on my journey and I have joined the teaching staff at the Cornwall Counselling Institute, which is part of the Cornwall College group. And I feel incredibly proud and fortunate that I get to play a role in other people's learning journeys as part of an amazing team. Finally, I'm sure you would like to join me in thanking the Cornwall College group, its wonderful lecturers and support staff, and everyone who've supported us in our unique journeys by giving them a huge round of applause. Thank you, Anne. 
Now that concludes our ceremony and all that remains is to thank the Dean of Truro Cathedral for allowing us to hold our celebration here and for the hard work undertaken by cathedral and college staff to ensure the success of today. Would everyone please rise for the academic procession. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, you'll see around the cathedral various refreshment stations. Please take some time to have a drink, toast your successes and enjoy this wonderful space. Take photographs and celebrate your achievement with your loved ones. We would ask that you do vacate the cathedral by, by 12.30 today, please. And finally, and most importantly, I ask you to give a standing ovation to the Cornwall College Group graduates of 2023. We wish you all the very best for the future.
Good afternoon and welcome to Cornwall's Cathedral, welcome to Truro Cathedral. I'm the Cathedral Dean, Father Simon Robinson. It's a great joy to welcome you here today for this great celebration of achievement. On behalf of the governing body of the Cathedral and the Bishop of Truro, I offer our heartfelt congratulations to you all. A couple of very practical notices. If you wouldn't mind uh, putting your phones on silent, that would be really good. Thank you. And secondly, in the highly unlikely event that we have to evacuate the cathedral, please make your way through the entrance at that end, or the accessible entrance, or through the chapter house steps over here in the corner. And please leave in an orderly fashion. It's highly unlikely we will need to evacuate the cathedral. Having been a teacher and a head teacher, I know how important it is for families to celebrate achievement. And I hope that you have a really wonderful afternoon today. Congratulations and well done to you all. And thank you for being here for this important moment in your lives. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, academic lecturers and staff, family, friends and graduates. As Vice Chair of the Board of Governors, it's my honour to welcome you to the Cornwall College Group's graduation ceremony for 2023. Today, we celebrate the academic and personal accomplishments of students from 10 of our campuses in Sussex, Devon and throughout Cornwall. Students who, with focus and resilience, have completed a learning journey that has led to this remarkable setting. On behalf of the Cornwall College Group, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone from Truro Cathedral for such a warm welcome. We're grateful to have the opportunity to host our graduation against such a beautiful and historic background. It's clear to see from all the parents, partners, family and friends present that it's a proud day for everyone. Feel free to express that pride during the conferment of wards a bit later on and know that loud clapping and yelling is strongly encouraged. We extend our thanks to those acting as confers during the presentation of awards today and we're delighted to be joined by Caroline Westwood, Dean of the School of Sports, Exercise and Rehabilitation at Plymouth Marjon University and Professor Archie Clements, Deputy Vice-Chancellor at the University of Plymouth. I'd also like to welcome Debbie Richards, Chief Executive for Cornwall Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. Debbie is a distinguished figure and an influential leader in the healthcare sector and will be delivering our keynote speech. We're also delighted to be joined by Dr. Joe Elworthy, Chief Science Engagement Officer at the Eden Project to present this year's Student of the Year Award. Before I finish, I'd like to offer my warmest congratulations to all graduates. Today is the culmination of your academic success and your many years of dedication and hard work. As you set off into the world as graduates, you should be proud of what you have achieved, just as everyone at the Cornwall College Group is enormously proud of you. Enjoy your day. I'd now like to invite John Evans, Principal and Chief Executive Officer of the Cornwall College Group, to say a few words. Good afternoon and welcome to our second graduation of the day. Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, family and friends, and of course graduates, welcome to the 2023 graduation ceremony for the Cornwall College Group. We are thrilled that you can join us in this impressive setting for a passionate celebration of success. To all of you graduates graduating today, congratulations. You have navigated through challenges, learned from your mistakes, and triumphed over adversity. You have not just gained new knowledge, you have developed friendships, discovered new passions, and grown as individuals. As you move forward, always remember the lessons you have learnt, 
not just from textbooks and journals, but from your experiences and interactions with one another, and for many will be lifetime friends. I have a great pride in standing here today, overseeing you graduating in such a diverse number of subject areas, such as horticulture and landscape design, ecological restoration, environmental farming, golf and business degrees, wildlife education, counselling, to name just a few. Now I am sure there was a time in the last year where you thought this day wouldn't come. Well, it has, and it's your day. Therefore, please ensure, as Pat has said, that you feel free to cheer, clap, or even scream and whoop as you see fit. It really is your day. You do what you want. As we gather here to mark the end of one chapter and the beginning of another, it is only fitting that we take a moment to acknowledge the incredible support that brought you all to this point today. I can remember working towards my degree and on reflection have realized that I could not have achieved it without the support, patience, and love of my family and friends. Now I'm sure that all of the graduates sat here today will be able to recall a time when you were just a little bit moody. There's a few nodding I can see. And not the most reasonable person to have around as deadlines started to loom. Despite this, your family and friends have still turned up to celebrate with you today. To the parents, guardians, and family members and friends who have stood by your side through the late night study sessions, the countless exams and assessments, and the occasional moments of doubt, their sacrifices and unwavering belief in you have not gone unnoticed. Your graduation today is as much a testament to their love and support as it is to your hard work and dedication. So let's take a moment for today's graduates to show their appreciation for the support, love and tolerance throughout the last few years by applauding them. I didn't hear any whooping. That's better. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our amazing higher ed education teams. As you have experienced, they are a group of fantastic teachers, passionate support staff, and dedicated experts who achieve and inspire year in and year out, supported by some excellent businesses and industry partners who provide a real world experience. Please, can we just acknowledge the part they have played in your, in your success by applauding them. I can tell you're warming up. I am very proud to be the principal of the Cornwall College Group. As you've heard, 10 campuses across Devon and Cornwall and even further, 1,000 apprentices, 2,816 to 18 year olds, 1,500 staff, and approximately 1,000 students studying undergraduate and postgraduate degree programs with 250 graduating to get today, having a massive impact on the local and regional economy. This year, we were, we were awarded silver in the Teaching Excellent Framework, the Ofsted of Higher Education, which positions us as one of the top higher education providers in the South West. So again, well done to everybody involved. The Cornwall College Group has been successfully delivering higher education programmes for many years in conjunction with our, with our university partners. Last year, with the support of our higher education partners, the Cornwall College Group was awarded university status of our own. U sorry, university centre status of our own. Therefore, we have been diligently developing university centre's brand, including the creation of a logo, graduation gowns, and marketing materials, of which you see me wearing today. 
Today, we are proudly launching the Cornwall College University Centre logo, specifically designed for our graduates and their award certificates. We have called it the Tree of Knowledge, which encompasses our University Centre's ethos and vision, and we are very proud of it, as you can see it on my sleeve. As its core, at its core, this design is a magnificent representation of a tree signifying growth, grounding, eco-consciousness and sustainability. Its roots gracefully incorporate marine life and coastal elements, highlighting our deep connection to the environment. If you look closely, the fish swimming into the design and the birds soaring out of the can can canopy vividly illustrate a transformative journey. The bird's flight symbolising our role in empowering learners, providing with their wings to soar. It includes acknowledgement to the Cornwall coat of arms and the Duchy of Cornwall, with 15 bezant coins in the tree's canopy. We feel that this modern and unique design sets us apart as a university centre that not only embraces innovation, but also offers something distinct and extraordinary in its educational offerings. In the roots of this tree, you'll find a Celtic heart, a nod to the rich Celtic roots of Cornwall and Devon. It beautifully represents how education lies at the heart of our university centres. It's our tree of knowledge. Graduates, please do not treat this as the end of your education journey, and you, you will hear that a lot today. My message is clear. This graduation ceremony is the beginning of your next journey, your next phase, the end of one chapter and the beginning of a new one. You have now gained a key to many doors. Behind each door will be numerous opportunities. The doors or doors that you choose to unlock will be your choice. Exciting times. And it reminded me, many years ago, I started as an apprentice motor vehicle mechanic and then went on to eventually become a motor vehicle lecturer. I thought I had made it. I was fortunate enough to have a head of department that advised, supported, and even forced me to understand that if I wanted to progress even further, I needed to, to gain a degree. My key. How right he was. I certainly had no idea at that time, many years ago, that one day I would be stood here as the proud principal of the Cornwall College Group. So this really is the beginning of your journey to make an impact on the world. In closing, I want to leave you with a quote from Barack Obama when he did a similar role to this. He said, all those adults that used to think were, used to think were in charge and knew what they were doing, it turns out that they don't have all the answers. A lot of them aren't even asking the right questions. So, if the world's going to get better, it's going to be up to you. Go and change the world. Congratulations, class of 2023. The world awaits your unique, con your unique contributions, and I have no doubt that you will rise to the occasion. Thank you for listening. Now, I'd very much like to welcome our guest speaker, Debbie Richards. Debbie began her career as a probation service officer and has since gained many years of senior level experience in clinical service delivery. Debbie's NHS career spans mental health, community services and acute trusts. As Chief Exec at Cornwall Partnership NHS Foundation Trust, Debbie is passionate about transforming community services with the voluntary, community and social enterprise sectors. It's a huge honour to have her here with us, so please give a warm welcome to Debbie Richards. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to speak today. It's an absolute honour to be asked to share a little of my journey with you. The last time I spoke in this cathedral, 
I was a pupil at Goonhaven Primary School and I was asked to read a lesson. It was a long time ago, so much so I can't even remember what I read, but I do remember certain things. I remember how proud my parents were and how many people they told, and that was being embarrassing. Pride is not something we talk very much about, is it? It's a bit embarrassing. But pride and feeling proud is something I'd like to talk a little bit about today. I also remember how nervous I was. I worried whether I was the right person to do the reading. I worried if I would read it well enough. Would I let my parents down? I had so much self-doubt. Now, I could have read it a bit better, but I did it. I was pleased I did it. And looking back, despite all that anxiety and self-doubt, I had made my parents, my classmates, and my school proud. But the thing I hadn't realized or recognized, and the thing that it has taken me many years to recognize, is that I had done myself proud. And I had nearly let my own self-doubt and my own anxiety deny me and my family that moment of pride. Now I've since learned I'm not alone. We all have self-doubt and we all have anxieties. Being proud of oneself, patting oneself on the back and saying, well done me, is not something that comes easy to any of us. When others say well done, we tend to shrug it off. Why do we do that? Recognition and validation are important. So please let me start by saying well done and many congratulations to each and every one of you. Please be proud as individuals with your own unique skills, interests and achievements. Only you really know what it has taken for you to be here today. I am sure along this journey you have been touched by the kindness of others. You will have been supported and encouraged by your lecturers, placement supervisors, family and friends. But this achievement is still yours. So please find a way, your way, to be proud of you, the person you have become, and how your achievements bring us all together in this magnificent place today. Now I was asked to come along and say more than well done. And then I thought, why have, I asked, why have I been asked? It's a long time since I spoke in this cathedral. Why did they ask me? And then my own self-doubt started to creep back in again. I dismissed many easy uh, narratives, such as Billie Eilish was already booked, or they were desperate, or I was the only one available, and concluded that I was asked, as I do have a story to tell, my story, and a story that in part started in Cornwall and started in this very cathedral. I was asked because the nine-year-old me who stood here reading that lesson so many years ago stands here today as chief executive of one of the two major NHS providers in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, delivering community services and mental health services. My trust employs more than 5,000 people Actually, some of the audience may be colleagues, so I'd better stay real today. And we're still looking for more staff. So in the future, graduates may become one of our staff. We will always have jobs for local people. I'm also so very proud that our organisation works closely with schools, colleges and universities to support and then develop local people into employment. That collaboration is particularly important to me personally. Why? Well, the promising child who read the lesson in this cathedral all those years ago moved from primary school to Truro Girls Grammar School and two years into my A-levels, I left school. My parents were horrified. I was leaving school at 16 because I was bored. I couldn't see the point in any more education a university education was not meant for a person like me. No one in my family had been to university before, so why would I be the first? My teachers had been encouraging and saying that I was university material. They also said I worked hard, but I only did well in subjects that interested me and that I became bored very easily. So I got a job in a bank and I realized that working in a bank and 
big apologies to anyone here who I might offend. Well, actually, I found that boring too. Oh dear, imagine my poor parents when I said that I wanted to leave. And that's my third theme. How do I overcome my need to remain interested and essentially not get bored? An opportunity to go traveling presented itself and I went a very long way from Cornwall. I went to the Republic of Vanuatu in the Southwest Pacific. Now that wasn't boring. It was beautiful, warm, and full of such lovely people, and I learnt so much about life and myself. I even realized how important and how valued the things that had bored me were. There was no television, no public libraries, a good choice of food in the supermarket, and yet these people were some of the happiest and healthiest in the world. But I couldn't stay away forever, and I returned to Cornwall. And in my early 20s, like most people, I settled down and had children. And then I thought, what do I do now? Back in Cornwall with a young family, few qualifications, and as much as I love my home and my family, I needed more from life. So I remembered those lessons, those life lessons from Vanuatu, and I realized how much I enjoyed learning about such a different culture and approach to life. And I started an open university degree in social sciences. And in fact, some of my lectures were held in Camborne. I still remember the lecturer's encouragement, the way they made me feel, and the thirst they gave me to continue to be curious. I loved that degree. I then secured a job with Cornwall Probation Service as a probation service officer. However, that job was a fixed term contract. And if I wanted to continue the work that I loved, I needed to be qualified. And at that time, it was not possible to gain that qualification in Cornwall. I chose a university where I could combine my studies for a diploma in social work with a master's degree. I also needed to find family accommodation close to schools and to the university. And the university that offered all this to me was Oxford University. And then more self-doubt crept in. Would they think I was good enough for them? But it was worth a try. And so, as a young mum with no A-levels and few achievements other than three fabulous children, I went to Oxford University and proudly graduated with my master's degree. I then started my career as a mental health social worker at Broadmoor Hospital. Now, that was a massive learning experience. And I soon progressed and was invited to join the hospital management team. And since then, I have had a fantastic career working across London and the South East in NHS management before returning to Cornwall two years ago. I frequently tell colleagues I have the best job in the world. I am proud to be the chief executive of my organization. And I am proud to remain a social worker, one of only two social workers to be chief executive in the NHS. And so here I am, back in Cornwall, and I have one of the best jobs in Cornwall. And do you know, I can in all confidence say to you today, you too can have one of the best jobs in the future. The best job isn't about status or about how much money you earn. The best job in life is one where you're happy, where you are interested, and one where you feel you can make a difference. So looking to the future, I have three tips. First, seize opportunities when they present themselves. Secondly, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Learn to manage self-doubt, get to know yourself, and embrace your traits. And thirdly, be rightly proud of yourself. And when things get tough, remind yourself of those achievements and how they made you and others around you feel. Those feelings are a gift that only you can give yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. So, now is the moment that you've all been waiting for. Please join me, Kate Wills, Deputy Principal at the Cornwall College Group, in applauding all of our graduates as they each take their moment to shine after years of hard work. 
is Caroline Westwood, Dean of the School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation at Plymouth Marjon University, and John Evans, Principal of the Cornwall College Group, would take their places. We will begin the conferment of awards. The BA honours International Business Management with Professional Golf, Thomas Beenham. Oscar Dobson. George Griffiths. <laughs> Hamish Hall. <laughs> Will Hyatt. Samuel Linsky. <laughs> Torin Little. <laughs> Samuel McRae. Max Osborne. Erin Parker. Adam Perks. Jamie Pritchard. Ellis Prodromo. George Young. The BA Honours International Golf Management, Joseph Silcock. <laughs> the BSC Honours Tournament Golf, James Bailey. James Drazy. Cameron Laird.
Adam LeVay. William O'Halloran. Konstantinos Parfenis. Thomas Seville. <laughs> Harry Thorne. <laughs> the FDSC Tournament Golf. Bradley Varco. Oscar Weston. Thank you, Caroline Westwood, for your conferment. You may take your seat. Can I now invite Professor Archie Clements, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Plymouth, to step forwards and confer the next set of awards in partnership with the University of Plymouth. The MSC Land and Ecological Restoration, Robin Champ. Naomi Kajin. <laughs> Jordan Danes. Paul Griffiths. <laughs> Joseph Jones. <laughs> Rebecca Herring. George Leggett. <laughs> Zanira Malik. Jack Murray. The MSC Land and Ecological Restoration Apprenticeship, Emily Cooper. <laughs> Robert Dolby.
Hannah Marshall. Rachel Thompson. James Whitby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the first ever MSc Land and Ecological Restoration Apprenticeship graduates. This is a UK first and an incredible achievement to gain a master's degree in ecological restoration through an apprenticeship route. Please give them a round of applause. The BSc Honours Applied Marine Zoology, Merrin Edwards Moore. Zenara Hayton. <laughs> Ethan Katecha. Laurie Millership. <laughs> Caitlin Price. Patience Stringer. <laughs> Ethan Taylor. The BSc Honours Applied Zoology, Nat Kenneford. <laughs> Alice Seymour. The BSc Honours Applied Zoology and Conservation, Gracie Allen. <laughs> Leah Bland. Maisie Boyland. <laughs> Isabel Burnett.
Rosalie Croker. Holly Gelbert. Lalian Mitchell. Amber Moyes. Georgia Osborne. Alfie Wagstaff. The BSc Honours Emergency Sector Management and Interoperab Interoperability. Rebecca Berry. Brandon Newbury. <laughs> Jessica Pester. Vanessa Sclara. <laughs> Louis Steer. The BSc Honours Environmental Resource Management, Eden Hummel. <laughs> Toby Newth. Laura Thornton. <laughs> Polly Trevilian. BSc Honours Horticulture Garden and Landscape Design, Scott Souter. <laughs> BSc Honours Horticulture Plant Science, Dominic Bryden. Anna Esterhosen. John Greenland.
Annalise Lyne. Florence Mansbridge. Mark Matthews. Javier Mesa Medina. <laughs> Sophia Parra. Adam Rayner. <laughs> Mary Wood. <laughs> Norman Wright. The FDSC Animal Behaviour and Psychology, Neve Crosswaite. <laughs> Michelle Marriott. The FDSC Animal Health and Management, Valkyrie Elder. <laughs> Megan Hutchinson. Ashling Slattery. <laughs> Sarah Wood. The FDSC Animal Husbandry and Welfare, John Hartley. <laughs> Ella Ross. Chloe Trebilgock. <laughs> Ebony Wynn. For the FDSC Conservation and Ecology, Jay Abbott. <laughs> ben
Benedict Hobbs. <laughs> Louise Jarrett. Gemma Patton. <laughs> Colby Shoker. <laughs> Elspeth Smart. Holly Thomas. <laughs> Jennifer Thomas. <laughs> Jack Williams. For the FDSC Horticulture, Maxine Packer. <laughs> Rory Kerry Pell. For the FDSC Marine Conservation, Archie Payne. <laughs> For the FDSC Operational Yacht Science, Ella Jameson. For the FDSC Rescue and Emergency Management, Connor Davey. <laughs> Hugo Ratsy Woodruff. For the FDSC Surf Science and Technology, Roger Cole. <laughs> For the FDSC Wildlife Education and Media, Jasmine Hinwood. Thomas Raby. <laughs> Jenna Reeves. <laughs> For the FDSC Zoological Conservation, Rebecca Burgess. Esther Walker. <laughs> For the HND Garden and Landscape Design, Ashley Crookshank.
Louise Gunning. Jill King. Thomas Ringshaw. For the HNC Marine Engineering, Daniel Barron. James Harris. Samuel Yendel. For the HNC Operational Yacht Science, Felix Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our conferments. John and Archie, thank you. You may take your seats. Now we come to the presentation of our Student of the Year Award. This is, award has been nominated by our teaching staff and chosen by a panel of higher education staff at the Cornwall College Group. I would like to invite Dr. Joe Ellsworthy, Chief Science Engagement Officer at the Eden Project, to step forward to present the award with John Evans, Principal of the Cornwall College Group. This award recognises a graduate for their academic excellence and embodiment of our community's values. Today, we spotlight an exceptional individual who has left a lasting mark on our university centre and the wider community. They've not only excelled academically, achieving a first-class degree, but have also been a constant source of inspiration to their peers. Their unwavering support and infectious enthusiasm have been absolutely remarkable. Beyond the classroom, this individual has dedicated themselves to marine conservation in Cornwall, volunteering and taking on vital roles, including with the Newquay Marine Group. They also secured a prestigious internship with the Cornwall Wildlife Trust, Your Shore Project. It's this student's commitment and passion for the marine environment that makes them our Student of the Year. I'm delighted to announce that the winner is Zanara Hayton. Thank you, John and Joe. You may take your seats. I would now like to invite our graduate from the Bachelor of Science with Honours, Applied Zoology and Conservation, Leah Bland, to say a few words.
Good afternoon, everybody. It is a real privilege to have been given the opportunity to deliver a vote of thanks on behalf of this year's graduates, but that's enough about me. It's true that we are rarely proud when we're alone, but I hope you'll agree, as a collective, the exuberance that has resonated throughout the cathedral today proves that each and every one of you sitting here should be exceptionally proud. Proud of your personal and academic achievements as graduates, proud of the patient support and reassurance you've provided to your loved ones to enable them to pursue their potential, proud of imparting your knowledge and expertise to guide your students through their studies, and proud of the everyday challenges, big and small, that you will have all, no doubt, overcome to get here today. We should take that pride, encouragement, and lifting up of one another into the next steps of our individual journeys. Today's achievements have by no mean feat, uh, sorry, no means, been an easy feat. Not only have there been many late, so late nights of intellectual and emotional labor, but it's also been a transitional period for all. Many of us here started our journey in an uncertain time where the shift to remote learning was in full swing. And this sometimes felt lonely and isolating and made the forming of meaningful connections and application of our learning somewhat difficult. However, everyone persevered and adapted. Our lecturers continued to deliver engaging online content whilst we determinedly focused and continued to learn. That in itself is commendable and speaks volumes about the resilience of this, this year's graduates. Even if we are all a little bit guilty of having a bit of wandering Wi-Fi when there was the slightest mention of breakout groups, we've all been there. You may feel grateful for what you've gained from your college, but they've also gained from us. And no, not just the hefty tuition fees, but the uni unique minds and characters which will have contributed to the continued culture and spirit of the Cornwall College Group. But of course, we would not be here without the support of everyone that makes up the college group and its associated bodies, as it really does take a community to get a degree. First and foremost, a big thank you to everyone involved in organizing and contributing towards the present day of celebration for us in this really wonderful setting. An almighty thanks is dedicated to the academic staff, our lecturers, tutors, and supervisors, for your consistent enthusiasm, motivation, and dedication to providing an accessible learning experience for all, despite facing your own personal trials. We sincerely appreciate you, quirks and all. <laughs> we would also like to thank the learning support staff, assessment coordinators, receptionists, cleaners, and catering staff who are pivotal to the functioning of our colleges. I don't think I'll ever remove the overpoweringly delightful aroma of Jan's garlic bread from my old factory memory bank, and that's really not a bad thing. My standing here today could be used to talk about a personal journey, but everyone's path to this point will have been unique to them. So instead, I encourage you to look around you, to speak to one another, and share in your experiences after the ceremony, and then promote each other going forward. But for now, I'd like to use this time to tell you about just some of the inspiring achievements of your fellow graduates so far. Through their studies, your peers have crowdfunded for conservation, produced valuable research that is now helping local charities choose more cost-effective screening methods for hedgehogs, as well as adding to the collection of vital long-term data sets for native reptile populations. Some have now moved on to postgraduate study or have gained internships within their chosen fields and received accolades including Young Volunteer of the Year Award for their commitment to Cornwall's wildlife. Others have found employment as animal nursing assistants, fisheries observers, assistant ecologists, environmental consultants, zoo rangers, and even kennel supervisors who are still taking inspiration from their studies by play playing classical music to the canines in their care although hopefully not hard of hearing hounds this time. All these amazing things you've done and continue to do are a result of your dedication and support um, we have received from everyone around us during our ac academic years. The possibilities of your hard work are endless, even within such competitive fields, and you really are all proof, proof of that. Yet, whatever your experience, wherever you find yourself now, and wherever you're going next, you got your degree, you did that, and no one can take that away from you. And academic and professional accomplishments aside, you're so much more than your degree classification. Everything you've learned alongside it is also formative. So be confident in who you are, and be proud of everything you're becoming, for that will be one of your most important attributes. Congratulations, everyone.
Thank you, Leah. That now concludes our ceremony, and all that remains is to thank the Dean of Truro Cathedral for allowing us to hold our celebration here, and for the hard work undertaken by Cathedral and College staff to ensure the success of today. Would everyone please rise for the academic procession? Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, you'll see around the cathedral various refreshment stations. Please take some time to have a drink, toast your successes and enjoy in this great space. Take photographs and celebrate your achievement with your loved ones. Finally, and most importantly, I ask you to give a standing ovation to the Cornwall College Group graduates of 2023. We wish you all the very best for the future.